This is the book of Joshua, chapter 24, and verse 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai. 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 Call Halonyam la Abanawa Yahweh. Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Bahasham Rachaha Kodash. Alright, that's who this world ignorantly and incorrectly calls God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in the ancient Paleo Hebrew language. Double honors unto the elders, apostles of Yashar Allah, um, of Israel, who uphold, who preach, and who teach the 100% truth. All right, to y'all, when I say double honors, also double honors to the elders, the Zaquan of the men of Israel camp, the Zaquan Chazak, whom I teach under here in Greenville, South Carolina. And a hearty, while a healthy shalom to Achyam wa Akwatyam, you brethren and sisters who are diligently and sincerely uh, preaching and teaching this 100% truth. To y'all, I say shalom, and that is Hebrew for peace. This is the Ach Alaya Ban Yahawada, the brother Elijah, son of Judah, and I'm coming with a quick exhortation through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rachaha Kodash. Right, in these last days for the edification of the elect. All right, when I say the elect, I'm speaking in reference of the remnant of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? Which today uh, we go by various uh, aliases, right? Um, by words and generic names, whatever the heathen, you know, our enemies can call us. You know, these are the so-called names we go by today, such as the so-called blacks. Hispanics and Native American Indians. All right, we are the Israelites, according to the Bible, and this ex this exhortation and lesson is unto the remnant. All right. So without too much else to say, as you can see by the title of this exhortation being sincerity or insincerity and in truth. All right, let's hop right back into the scriptures, and Abba Ratzah, Lord willing, this is edifying. So once again, this is the book of Joshua, chapter 24, and we're starting at verse 14. It says, as you see, even by the subheading, as a quote, it says, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24 and 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. Matter of fact, let's even put an emphasis on that. And that's what's going to be the title of this lesson. You know, and, and truly I'll tell you guys uh, through the spirit, uh, this is really impromptu. As I was dwelling in the spirit earlier and I was just reading some scriptures in uh, Ecclesiasticus, also known as the book of Sirach. I'm rereading that, um, that book and there's a few precepts in there uh, that I was just reading through uh, while I was at work on my lunch break. And I was just dwelling in the spirit. Like, I wonder what lesson the Lord may want me to make today. And I didn't really get anything specifically that stood out. And I was, you know, the spirit didn't hit me and be like, boom, this is it. You know, but as I was uh, leaving work and was handling some business and doing things with the family, um, I was dwelling in the spirit. And the thought came into me, into my mind, the, the literal phrases, uh, sincerity and truth right literally just that and it, i got reminded as soon as i heard that i was like boom that's the spirit that's what i want to do my lesson on i got reminded that this past shabbat uh on the sabbath right which currently according to the new moon the shabbat actually comes in on saturday eve and it ends on sunday eve so saturday night to sunday night is the the new moon sabbath right and uh, while it was this past Sabbath, I was still with my family, and we actually just finished wrapping up reading um, the book of Joshua. We read the last, what is that, seven, eight, nine, ten, the last ten chapters of the book of Joshua. And this, it explains why that, that phrasing, that wordiology, if you will, uh, was fresh on my mind. 
And as soon as those words pop into my head, I'm like, boom, that's perfect in the spirit because those of us who are truly and sincerely, you know, no pun intended, <laughs> trying to, you know, work out our own fear and salvation within these last days, those are the key attributes and those are the key qualities that it takes in order to please the Heavenly Father, to truly serve Him, right? And these are the same things that Joshua, you know, who, which in the Hebrew, his name is pronounced Yahweh Shai, right? Um, this is also how we know how to pronounce uh, the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son, right? Our Lord, who this world ignorantly and incorrectly calls Jesus the Christ, right? Um, this is how we also know how to say His true name in the Hebrew, right? Excuse me, in the Lashawan Kodash, because... When, when you trace it back, the name Joshua and the Greek name that you get uh, Jesus from, uh, Jesus, they, they actually are one and the same. It's the same name. You know, so when you go into the Hebrew and you understand how to pronounce the, the name Joshua in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew language, we know that's truly how you would pronounce, you know, our Lord, our Lord's name as well, which is Yahweh Shai, meaning he deliverer or he redeemer, right? The son of the heavenly father as he exists to be our deliverer, right? So, again, I say all that to say, uh, it was just in the spirit when those words popped into my mind today. I was like, boom, this is perfect because the key thing that the true servants of Yahweh Bashem Yosha are looking for to do in these last days is to please the Lord in whatsoever way, form, shape, and fashion, you know, we can. And it's actually detailed in the scriptures. The Lord actually made it clear and evident what is required of us to please him what is required of us to do the things that will, will you know will allow us to be accepted in his sight and, and it even goes back even to what's commonly known as the so-called old testament right this is not a new doctrine it's not a new philosophy it's not a new religion you know this is the truth man you know the lord put the holy spirit upon joshua to even instruct our forefathers and foremothers on what it takes to truly serve and fear the Lord. In Joshua chapter 24 and verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord, Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And that's what the majority of our people are lacking in these last days, man. Sincerity, right? You know, the Lord can tell when someone's, you know, half stepping and, and half doing things and not fully committing, not, you know, you uh like I said. Uh, you basically just doing half work, you know, when the Lord tells you, you know, to go a mile, you only go in a few feet, you know, just to say, well, I tried or I did it, you know, or when the Lord tell you, you know, how, how to truly repent, you know, and you saying, well, you know, just making excuses for why you can't do it, you know, yet and still you're looking for a salvation, but you're not truly sincere towards the Lord, you know, or even when it comes to doing the will, man, when you have a, a basis and a foundation of the knowledge of the, tr of the truth, you know, what are you doing with it? Are, are you just hiding it, keeping it to yourself, you know, or, or are you spreading and doing the best that you can to uplift and exhort the, uh, the name of the Lord according as it is written? You know, as we do understand, we got to do things in decency and in order, you know, that, that <laughs> common precept, a lot of people quote, but do you actually know what that means, you know, in decency and in order? It means that you have to go according as it is written. You can't just take matters into your own hand. You know, and you can't just make yourself, you know, righteous or chosen or a servant. No, the Lord truly puts the spirit upon you as he did Joshua, as he did Moses before him. You know, as he did many great men, even before Moses, even going all the way back to Abram, right? Which we know is uh, Abraham, you know, the heavenly father is the one that puts the spirit on his servants to do you know, according as he as he bids them, whatever he needs, right? And that's the sincerity part. Let's actually give this word sincerity in, in the Hebrew, right? It's knowing what you're supposed to do and, and, and then, you know, doing your best to actually do it, man. You know, so this is Strong's H, 8549. And it's the Hebrew word, uh, Tom Yum, Tom Yum, right? Which... In the outline of biblical usage means complete, whole, entire, sound, right? So you don't do something halfway or partially. No, you complete it. You know, you, you wholly do it. There's nothing left undone, right? Entire. <laughs> you know, I just got done eating dinner. And, you know, you're not done. You're not complete, you know, from eating dinner unless your food is gone. 
you know? <laughs> if you don't eat all your food, then guess what? Dinner hasn't been complete. There's leftovers, right? There's things that's undone, right? It says in the strongest definition, it says entire, literally, figuratively, or morally, also as a noun, integrity. So what's your integrity looking like towards serving the Lord, man? You have to serve the Lord with integrity. All right, let's, let's get a soft definition of that real quick. Integrity means honesty, unity even, as a noun, according to the Oxford American Writer's Thesaurus. All right? Uh, integrity as a noun it says the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness, the state of being whole and undivided, according to the New Oxford American Dictionary. So the Lord is also testing our integrity in these last days. You have a lot of Israelites through blood, you know, that are true descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? Even if you look at this 12 tribes chart again, you know, there's plenty of biological bloodline descendants of Israel, right? But how many of them have true integrity, right, when it comes to the scriptures? How many of them have true integrity when it comes to obeying the Heavenly Father? You'll notice that number start to dwindle very much, man, you know? And, and it's not, you know, anything that anyone can say or gain, say or resist, that truth, that fact, it's just evident. The scriptures have outlined and detailed it, that, you know, Israel is a rebellious, stiff-necked, and hard-hearted people. And then prophetically, you know, through the Holy Spirit, we understand that it's already been revealed that two-thirds, the majority, right, pursuing Zechariah chapter 13, the majority of the Lord's own people are, are not going to be delivered. They're going to be destroyed on this side here in America, right, so-called America, right? And, you know, according to the scriptures, it's Babylon the Great. Uh, spiritual Sodom and Egypt, which which tells you the spirit and vibration of this place, you know, nothing but confusion, right? And what were they doing in ancient Sodom and Gomorrah, engaging in all types of uh, wicked fleshly desires and fleshly lusts, men laying with men, women laying with women, um, you know, uh, the whole group uh, scene, you know, all t all types of uh, sexual immorality was uh, being done back then. How much more America today? Right, as the United States is, I believe I heard that they're the number one leading in corn, right? The number one country that, that is leading in, in the corn industry, man, you know? So we already understand the spirit and vibration of, of this place, America. A lot of the Israelites are, are blinded to it. They, they're caught up in it, you know? So their integrity when it comes to the law, statutes, and commandments, or the, the truth of the scriptures, they're not going to hold themselves subject to that. You know, they're not going to measure themselves according to the scriptures because, you know, you have to lack integrity in order to truly make it here in America. You have to lack, you know, a true moral, moral compass, right? Lack morality in order to uphold and to uplift America. There are two completely different lifestyles, two completely different ideologies and beliefs, you know. So let's digress from that. It says, Strong's definition also as a noun meaning integrity and truth. So even the term itself, uh, um, let's go back to it. Sincerity, it truly goes back to truth, you know? <laughs> That's truly what the Lord desires of us when it comes, you know, to pleasing and to serving Him. Be truthful, be honest, you know? Not just about, you know, yourself and the world, but be honest in regards to even the, the message that the Heavenly Father gave to us to tell these people we can't just sugarcoat and make up our own doctrine no we got to tell you the truth what does the heavenly father actually say and command us to tell y'all is about to happen are you doing that are you trying to beat around the bush and make people think that there's another op another option or opportunity outside of what the heavenly father said was going to happen you know this, these are the things that it, it takes in order to be a true servant of the heavenly father right as it says uh, truth meaning without blemish, complete. These are words that also come from the Hebrew word tum yum, right? Which is where you get the word sincerity from. It says complete, to be full, to be perfect, sincerely, right? Sound, without spot, undefiled, upright, whole, right? These are the attributes and the characteristics that it takes to serve the Lord, right? Let's let's go back to it. And keep in mind, these are instructions that Joshua was given back then. How much more should we have these things now? And, and 
Israel was much better off back then. They had just received the, the promised land, you know? How much more us now when we know that we're in the land of our captivity? How much more us now when we know we already have been consumed? We're trying to get back to good graces with the Lord, man. It takes us serving him in sincerity and in truth, right? Let's get this word truth while we're here. Uh, Hebrew word, Strongest H571. Uh, Tazamah. 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 Hold on, let's confirm this. Because I'm not 100% fluent in the Hebrew just yet, but I'm practicing learning, trying to get back to my roots, you know? <laughs> so bear with me. Baba Kisha, okay, let me see. Tama. Oh, wait, hold on. And I even said that right. So, Salakia is Amath. Oh, I, I knew that. Salakia. I'm tripping. Amath, right? Amath, right? Which means truth. That's even where you get the word math from, right? Numerology and math. It goes back to the truth. Understanding the truth. So, you know, Salakia for that. Uh, learning curves, right? <laughs> Outline of biblical usage. It means firmness, faithfulness, truth, sureness, reliability, stability, Continuance, faithfulness, reliableness, truth, as spoken, truth of testimony and judgment, truth of divine instruction, truth as a body of ethical or religious knowledge, truth as in true doctrine. Do you have the true doctrine of the Heavenly Father, the 100% truth? Do you know the, the good, the bad, and the ugly that the Heavenly Father promised he can and will do to the earth in which he made? Right? This is the way we've been set up to understand and then forward. Right? We've been sent to, to preach the truth. This is not of us. We're not, we don't do this for preeminence. We don't do this because for vain glory. We want to look deep and look cool and have a status here in America. No, man. We don't do that for anything like that, especially on this side. This place is through. This place is about to be destroyed, man. We, we seek true honor from the Heavenly Father in His kingdom, man. From doing the things that are pleasing in his sight. Which means what? Mortifying the deeds of the flesh. Putting off the old man. Forsaking the things that you used to do in the world before you came into the knowledge of the truth. And becoming that new creature, that new man. Which is truly formed and fashioned. It's made in the image and likeness of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Right? Which, how did he live? How did he conduct himself? What did he teach? You know? How, how was he towards the Lord? Was was he in sincerity and in truth? Absolutely, right? And no, that's not saying that, you know, all, uh, any of us can, can be him or can truly be compared to him. Absolutely not. What that says is that the Heavenly Father set up his son, our Lord Yahweh Shai, to set the bar for us, man, you know? And that bar can be met. The scriptures talk about how, you know, our Lord Yahweh Shai is the firstborn among many brethren, Right? Let, let's get there real quick. You know? Because the Heavenly Father didn't commit, uh, create the commandments just to show us how wicked we were. <laughs> no. The Heavenly Father created the commandments for us to keep them. Right? Um, I'll type them bread. I'm going to be hungry. <laughs> Brother first. Born, right? Because I heard that earlier today and that kind of irritated my spirit, man. Somebody tried to say, um, well, did the did the Most High create the commandments for us to keep them, or did He show did He make the commandments just to show us how how wicked our nat our nature is? Man, get on somewhere, Jake. You know, the Heavenly Father created the commandments, which manifests how how wicked we are. You know, naturally how uh, nature itself, or should I even say, uh, the flesh, earthly, sensual, devilish thoughts are against righteousness, against truth. Right, it's not subject to the law, neither indeed can it be. But ultimately, the inheritance and the legacy of the sons of God, the Israelites, is that we keep the commandments, right? So there's no way around it. You, you know, the commandments are, are meant to be kept and they're going to be kept, right? But this is Romans chapter 8, and it says, let's start at verse 28. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Which, what is the love of the Lord? First John 5 and 3. Go and read it, right? It's the keeping of the commandments. It says, to them who are the called, 
according to his purpose. So you have to be called according to the Heavenly Father's purpose in order to truly love him, in order for deliverance to truly come unto you from the second death, right? Thermonuclear fire. That's what's been prophesied and spoken to come upon Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, at the climax of World War III, right? After the MOTB, the Mark of the Beast, is mandated and Im implemented and pushed on the whole world, starting from America, pursuing a Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 on down. It is the RFID head, you know, for you gainsayers out there. And it's also tied hand-in-hand -hand simultaneously with the, the neuro L-I-N-K, right? The brain see hit it, all of this it is prophesied in the scriptures and the lord said everyone and anyone who receives that haragma that physically implantable device the size of a grain of rice within them they're going to have their part in, in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone and that's pursuant to uh, revelation chapter 14 even you know there's no escape man only those who are called and chosen to be delivered according to predestination, of course, as we're going to read, they're going to receive the deliverance of Yahweh Shai. And they have fruits and works to even show that they weren't saved because of their works and fruits. No, but their works and their fruits show that they had sincerity and truth towards the name of Yahweh Shai. All right, Romans 8 and 28, uh, 29, it says, For whom he did foreknow, the Israelites, he also did predestinate, or which is truly the elect of the Israelites, right? To be conformed to the image of his son, which is that righteousness, right? It says that he, our Lord Yahweh Shai, his son, might be the firstborn among many brethren. You see that? So our Lord Yahweh Shai does have brothers who, who he is not worth, uh, that he's not ashamed to call them brethren, right? Why? Because they also would be made righteous before the eyes of the heavenly father man you know it says even in verse 30 it says uh moreover whom he did predestinate before the earth was even formed and fashioned them he also called and whom he called them he also justified and whom he justified them he also glorified you know and ultimately this is all going to be done for the elect's sake and as it says in verse 33 no 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 man can lay a charge to the elect, man. You know, Yahweh Bashim Yashai set up, you know, ultimately that, that door of mercy for them to be pardoned, right? For them to be re received as sons again, right? That's the gospel. This is the good news. Israel has not been forsaken. Uh, Judah has not been forsaken of his God, nor Israel from his power. Lucy paraphrasing, you know? So picking back up at Joshua 24, because once again, these are all the attributes that it takes to truly serve the Lord. Uh, Joshua 24 and 14, it says, Now, therefore, fear the Lord, Yahweh, and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And see, and, I, and that, that goes perfectly in line through the spirit of what I was explaining. You got to be able to put away those gods that you used to serve, that you used to know, man. The same gods that our ancestors got caught up in worshiping that were no gods, man. These false idols, these false gods. Jesus the Christ and, and um, uh, Buddha and, and, you know, whatever, atheism. You know, just believing in any and every other doctrine outside of what we've been commanded to keep and commanded to believe and to understand and to know is the truth. If you're serving those gods, you will be destroyed, man, you know. And then Joshua went on further to elaborate and to explain. I'll read it as well. Uh, verse 15, and if it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord, because you have a lot of Israelites saying, no, we're not supposed to keep the commandments. No, he didn't really mean for us to do that. We don't have to. You, we've been delivered from the law. We're not bound by the old law, brother. We we free from the law of sin and death. <laughs> this is madness, man. So if it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord, Yahweh, choose you this day whom you will serve. If it seems evil for you to be sincere and to uphold the 100% truth, you know, from even from the Heavenly Father, the Most High, Yahweh, B'Hashem Yahweh who gave us these things, as the scripture said, choose you this day whom you will serve, you know, cause, and really it's already being made manifest. It's not like you got to come up to the Lord and be like, I choose not to serve you, even though people are probably going to do that dumb thing anyway, but... You know, you don't have to do all that. You'll show up by your actions. You'll show up by your thoughts and your deeds and the things that you engage in and uphold as as truth, 
you know even though it won't really be truth you in your mind you'll hold it to the standard of truth like they say here in america live your truth there's many different versions of truth nowadays man when according to the scriptures there's only one truth and there is only one lord you know, you know? It's going to be made manifest in these last days. It, it's, it's okay. This is why the Lord set up such elements and such things as the sword and famine and plague and uh, destruction, you know, fire. You know, the Lord made all these spirits for vengeance, man. You know, to ultimately lay the land desolate and to destroy the sinners thereof out of it. You know, it says, Joshua 24 and 15, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, right? Molech and and um, uh, Baal and all these other idols and gods, you know, uh, Satan, their spiritual demon, Satan, right? Which, you know, you saw you don't promote him and everything. Even Jesus the Christ goes back to, you know, Satan. It's a false, <gasps> excuse me, it's like him. It's a false god. It's a false idol, man. Christianity and Islam being two of the most, you know, uh, the biggest stumbling blocks that our people are caught up in, man. Christianity and Islam, and and those both are both are pagan ideologies, man. You know. So it says, uh, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, Bahasham right? So and, and you got Israelites just like the scripture said. That are just worship the gods uh, of the, the nations, the heathens, in whose land they dwell in. You got Israelites that live in China, so now they acting like they Chinese, and now they worshiping Buddha. You know, you got people who live in, in India, now they worshiping, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, I forget that that guy, the guy's name, the idol, you know, with with the six arms and all the other crazy stuff, man. The blue guys, whatever, you know, go look it up. And now, and now that's who they worship. You got Israelites who live in America, and, and now they're worshiping Jesus the Christ. You got Israelites that live in um, South America, and, and, and now they're Catholic, you know. So it goes to show you, this is the Israelites by the T. They're followers, man. When the tr truly the Heavenly Father set them up to be the leaders, you got them being, you know, simple and just following the nations in the land that they dwell in, right? But as for me and my house... Right, and this is even the spirit of the elect speaking through the scriptures, man. Even though this is Joshua, you know, this is the same spirit that the election, the chosen, faithful remnant of the Israelites, also pertaining to Zechariah chapter 13, that last man. verse. We know that there's going to be a remnant that the Lord is going to receive and call his own. They're going to say that the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahshai, is their God, and he shall say, They are my people, right? So as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahshai. And it's that distinction, it's that sincere and true spirit that's going to separate the sheep from the goat, right? Even pursuing the, to the book of Matthew, right? When the Lord says he's going to separate the sheep from the goats. Right, what is that? Um, yeah, Matthew 25, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. That division is truly being set up already, man. You know, and, it's, and it shows up through who the Lord gives the Holy Spirit unto. This sincerity and truth is exactly what the Lord is looking for in the hearts and minds of the elect. That broken and contrite heart, that broken and contrite spirit that knows that, hey, man, we've fallen short. We done messed up bad, man. You know, we messed up terribly bad. And even, you know, uh, understanding that, you know, it's the Lord that has us in this situation to truly learn from these experiences through these tribulations and through this turmoil, this hell, this captivity, that we, we learn truly what wickedness looks like, man. That that way, when we receive the kingdom, man, we understand both sides, righteousness and wickedness, man. We've experienced it. We've known it. You know, the Lord is once again conditioning us for rulership because he never negated his promise. He's never reneged on his word. He's not a man that he should lie. He promised us the kingdom of heaven, and that's exactly what's going to come, but only to the election first. The rest of Israel has to get it on the next go around, on the next side, man, which is truly no next side. You're going to be reborn in the kingdom as a newborn baby, you know, to start over, right? But at least you'll be righteous in that time, man. You know, our prayer, our desire as the hopeful elect, you know, is that we do what is required and what's needed of us now, you know, that way we don't have to suffer 
you know, far worse, man. We understand why we're suffering now, so the Lord doesn't have to, you know, punish us even more, right? Let me get this scripture, uh, and we'll probably end it with this, Father. So, all right. This is the other scripture that came to my mind when I thought about this. So this is John chapter 4 and verse 21. It says, Yahweh shall say unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Right? Because you have a lot of so-called believers. And I say so-called believers because they claim to believe in the Bible. They claim to follow the scriptures. But they have no true understanding on, on the Heavenly Father and his will and his words. Right? Yahweh shall told her, Again, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. He said, woman, look, you don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> you know? And that's the, the, the true and sad case for a lot of individuals, man. You know, go and read Proverbs chapter 1 and tell you how the Lord is going to laugh at their calamity as they reject the knowledge. He, he's also going to reject them. Lucy paraphrasing, man, you know? And truly what our Lord Yahweh was saying here applies even to the Israelites. And he was speaking to a non-Israelite woman, you know, but once again, you got Israelites out here claiming, you know, the name of Jesus, the Christ, the name of Yeshua, you know, the name of, uh, uh, of Yehudi, you know, just making up all kind of stuff, you know, and I can't lie. I used to be in Christianity too at a point in time, but the Lord also tested me. He tried me when truth was made manifest, when the truth was shown. Did you understand? Did you actually believe? Were you obedient? Did you, you know, were you held uh, under subjection to that truth? Or did you just stay in your own ways and, and decide to, to make up your own truth, man? Yahweh Shai had to tell this woman to her face, ye worship, ye know not what. You don't know what you worship, right? It says, we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews, right? And that, that means the Israelites, man, not just the tribe of Judah. Not just Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. No, we understand. We know what we worship. Salvation is for Yashar Allah, the Israelites, the princes and the sons of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. As it says in verse 23, and this is really being the point. And when I say Yashar Allah, that's really all of the Israelites, man. Not just the 144,000, pursuing in Revelation chapter 7, but also the rest of the men, women, and children, that great multitude that also believed. Right and have works toward your help, Hashem Yahweh Shai. It says that in Revelation chapter seven, starting with the hundred, one hundred and forty-four thousand, the twelve thousand out of each one of the twelve tribes of Israel, being just the men, you know, the prophets, the mighty men of valor, you know, and then the rest of the nation as well. That remnant, that one third, they're also going to be delivered as well. As it says in verse twenty-three, but the hour cometh and now is right. So even now. When the true worshipers shall worship the Father, Yahweh, in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So you see this? This is what the Heavenly Father requires of us when it comes to serving him. Once again, that, that word sincerity meaning in fullness and completion, not doing half the work, not doing partial of it, not doing a little bit of the work, and now you're tired, you think you're done, done enough. Not just repenting one day, but then tomorrow or the next day, you're not repenting no more because you think you're perfect. You think you got it already. You think you're untouchable. No, this truth is something that we're constantly working through, right? Constantly doing better and the best that we can, even trying to do better than we did yesterday. You know, and constantly looking and, and holding ourselves subject unto the truth, which Yahweh our Lord told us that what I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know, and even this word spirit, when you get precepts upon what the spirit is, it tells you that the, the spirit of, of the Lord is the spirit of prophecy. You know, or should I say, the testimony of the Lord is the spirit of prophecy, right? And, and in order to understand prophecy, it all goes back to the commandments. Isaiah tells us that, you know, this truth is given unto us precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And that's why a lot of this world, that's why this, this world cannot understand it. It's only revealed to the Lord's servants, the prophets. Amos chapter 5 and verse 7, I believe that is, right? 
I had quit them, but I always like, made sure I'm sending y'all to the right scripture. No, Amos chapter 3 and 7. Yeah, Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. Surely the Lord, Yahweh, Bashamim, and Shah will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So those who know what it truly, those are who knows what it truly takes to worship him. Yahweh Shai is a prophet. He prophesied in Matthew, we just read it, that ultimately the Lord is going to separate the sheep from the sheep from the goats. You know, in that same chapter, he prophesied the destructions, the wars, you know, the earthquakes, the destruction that's going to be everywhere in the earth. And his also return, right, to establish the righteous government, right? The destruction of America and the ushering in of, of the, the kingdom of heaven. This is what's written. This is what the prophets are speaking about. It's not a happy, happy, joy, joy message. It's very much death and destruction that's coming to all of those who lack sincerity and truth toward the God of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know, he is to be feared above all gods. And either Yahshua Allah, you, you, we understand it, and we're doing what is necessary to please the Heavenly Father, or you're going to get caught back in like one of the Lord's ops, man, like one of his enemies. And that's just, just the simplest way we can put it, man. You know, so I thank the Nautawadi Yahabashim Yahusha for giving me this exhortation and lesson through the Spirit, you know, through the Rechak because I was, you know, the Lord, and I was dwelling in the Spirit, like, what should I go into? And boom, the Lord gave me this, man, impromptu. But I pray, Abarat, as our Lord willing, this was edifying to the sincere, hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, of Yahshua Allah. All right, so until next time, once again, I want to give true double honors to the elders and apostles of Yahshua Allah, of Israel, scattered across the four corners of the earth, upholding and preaching and teaching this 100% true. Also, double honors and shout out to the Zaquan, the elder of the men of Israel, Kemp, the Zaquan Chazak whom I teach under here in Greenville, South Carolina, and a hearty, well, a healthy shalom to Achim Wa'afwatha and you brethren and sisters who are diligently and sincerely working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling toward your salvation. All right, until next time, wake up, Jacob. Shalom.